Hello, everyone. Steve Brady is a Principal Operations Inspector in the Orlando office, and he's going to drag us, if we have to, kicking and screaming, into the modern age. He will be talking about how we're using internet-based internet airman certificate forms in order to make our lives easier, believe it or not, easier. Steve has been CFI of the year twice in this LA, dis in the long, long not LA, sorry, in the Florida district. And he's also been named Aviation Safety Counselor of the Year as well. Steve works really hard these days with airmen in his 135 operator operations and also in his 141 schools. Please welcome Steve Brady. Thank you, Kathleen. Thank you, everyone. My task today is to get the word out on a program called IACRA and many of you may or may not be aware of how the electronic age has kind of taken over and the FAA is trying to produce a a paperless a paper reduction act they call it and what I want to do is just an interactive program this morning to show how we can get these airmen and, and a multitude of functions not only airmen but mechanics uh, ultralight pilots and a whole uh, diverse group that need to apply with the the former application called an 8710-1 and, and in doing so I originally was going to certify somebody in the audience and uh, that person is, is just predisposed at the time so what I've done is I've I've loaded a training server into our website remember IACRA is a web-based program and we can get to it with a laptop or with any computer that's wireless or any computer that would have uh, dial-up and or broadband. However, IACRA is more attuned, if you will, to broadband. A lot of our local pilot examiners have been, uh, and inspectors as well, they were, and, and myself as well, when IACRA first came out, we were kind of opposed to it. We were set in our ways. We had been used to doing the paper 8710s either in pen or in a typewriter. And, and it, it was a comfort zone for us. And we tried this. Uh, the program originally came out and it was a tuned ACRA. And it was, you know, Airman Certification Rating Application. What I suggest you do is just Google anybody who is afraid to use computers um, one of the first things you learn is how to do search engines and Google is a wonderful search engine and I'm experiencing problems so let's see what's happening alright well Google's not working it worked a minute ago I'll try my training server. The training server came up. Anyway, what I would do is I would Google on your personal computer and you type in the word IACRA. It's just the letters I C A R A, IACRA, I A C R A, IACRA, and it's an internet application certification rating application. And the very first thing that comes up in Google will be the FAA IACRA website. And remember, mechanics now are going to be using it, as well as pilots, as well as repairmen, as well as parachute riggers, and, and all those. And I wanted to take you to a path. Let me back up and see if I can get another site. Let's do a live search. under IACRA and see what comes up. There it is. And the reason I wanted to show you this site is because this is the real site. What I had previously shown you was the the internet training server. But when you go over here you'll look at list of paths. And it's very very important the paths that IACRA has taken now. If you'll notice up top we we now can apply for IAs. We can issue an inspection authorization. 
They can renew an inspector authorization by activities. We can renew them by a refresher course. They can, an inspector can renew them by oral test. Repairmen for light sport aircraft are now supported by IACRA. Crew members, when we issue second command ratings and, and, and pilot type ratings. Pilots, we can do students, standard, part 61. We can even do the foreign pilot applications now on IACRA. And what it does, it allows the person who is making the recommendation or the applicant to be paperless. And it automatically, at the end of the session, once you've submitted the application, it now automatically is sitting in AFS 760 out in Oklahoma City, excuse me, at the Airman Rating Office out there. And it supports restricted certificates, U.S. Part 61 certificates. It supports Part 141, and most recently, Part 142, which is these training facilities that are out there like SIMCOM, Flight Safety, CAE, SEMIFLIGHT, et cetera, et cetera. All right, that's why I wanted to show you the original IACRA site. Also, if you experience a problem on IACRA, you have what's called report a bug, and you could click on that, and it would allow you to type in a brief description of your problem, and it would go to one of the technician's desk out there in Oklahoma. So it's very, very important. What I'm going to do now is we're going to go back to our training server, which I preloaded during the intermission. And we're going to begin training. And it's going to be very interactive. And at most productions, you'll see people say, hold your questions till the end. I don't necessarily want to tell you that in this particular program, because I want to address the problem as one would occur, or a question as it would occur in your mind. However, a couple things about IACRA. IACRA doesn't take well to the to the back arrow. If you're working in IACRA and you have a problem, try not to arrow backwards. And I'll show you that in a little bit as we do some of our training, okay? Generate logins. What I did is I had Oklahoma City prepare a list of some of some phantom pilots so that we could have the, the numbers associated with their login procedures. So we'll just begin training. If we wanted to register, we would go over here and click on register, i.e. that would be for somebody who has never registered before. And what I recommend is, is click the boxes that you intend to use not only now, but in the future, okay? In this particular case, we would want to be an applicant. If we were a flight instructor that, that is accustomed to recommending people, you know, there are a lot of flight instructors who hold a flight instructor certificate who never recommend anybody, and they simply keep it to keep their certificate current. They go to annual, or excuse me, they go to biannual uh, refresher clinics or refresher courses, one not uncommon like we put on here annually. So they would click recommending instructor, in my case, I'm an inspector, so I would put that. But years ago, I was an examiner, so I had that one. If you click one in error, just simply unclick it. You can click them off and click them on, just as simple as that. In our particular case today, our phantom applicant, we're going to put him as applicant only. Later in the road, once you log into your opening page, a function on the right side of the screen will allow you to edit that registration. Anyway. That's what your screen would look like if you were a brand new IACRA user. And you would put your certificate number right there. Now remember, I was going to register somebody, but that person's been predisposed. And we will go back as if we had already registered. One area of caution is when you do your airman certificate number, it supports nine digits. So if you have one of these new numbers that's only seven digits long, simply prefix the number with zero, zero. So if there are any questions on that, it's you want to prefix the number with zero, zeros if it's seven numbers or less. And the date of issuance is the date of, a, of the issuance on the certificate. Quite often at the Flight Standards Office, we'll get a guy that comes in, he or she was originally issued their certificate back in 1930. However, they added a rating, or they decided to get one of the new 
credit card size plastic cards and that new date is what shows up. Only in the FAA records do we have the original date of issuance. And it's, if, if that occurs and you want to keep one of your old certificates for a memento, um, we have a method of doing that and that will allow you to keep that for sentimental reasons. All right, remember we'll go up here. We don't want a back arrow once we're in the program. Now we're not in the program yet. All right, so we've got, we're going to go back to the home page and we're going to log out and we're going to log back in and in doing so we avoid a lot of problems. We'll get our toolbar back and ladies and gentlemen of the audience several years ago I didn't have to work a computer either so it was very daunting for me and we find that a lot. People will say I'd just rather not do this. I'd rather do them the old-fashioned way. Again our office processes on the upwards of, of nine to ten thousand plus certificates a year. All right, for today's session, we're going to assume we've already registered. And let me talk a moment about this registration process. The old program I mentioned earlier, ACRA, was a very, very good program. The reason ACRA did not continue forward was that we had a problem interfacing what is called the electronic signature. It's a security device. Because can you imagine, quite frankly, with the problems we've had since 9-11, if anybody and everybody with access to the internet could issue themselves a type rating without the appropriate checks and balances and the security by new IACRA, they could have done that. And quite frankly, that's a scary thought. We're going to assume we've already registered and we're going to log in as an applicant. Now this next item you see is an FTN. And what it is, it's a federal tracking number or FAA tracking number. And that number, once assigned to you from your original registration, that number will stay with you for the duration of your certificate being held. In this particular case, we're going to certificate Mr. Bill Savage, going by the name of William Savage. Okay? And Mr. Savage has already been issued. He's already registered. He's pre-registered. And he is going to go, what do we want to issue this guy? Let's issue him a private pilot. So we'll put in his federal tracking number, which I have in front of me. And you'll notice, see how the numbers, are the numbers showing up up there? When I pre-registered him this morning prior to this program, those numbers stayed in the memory. And that's a nice thing, especially if you're an inspector and or a pilot examiner or even more importantly a recommending instructor and you have a running log of the people that you are certifying or the people that you are recommending if you will. Again our guy's name is Will W. Savage and notice by typing the first letter his name came up again. It saves that also. And for the purposes of this program we're going to use a preset password for the training server However, if you were registering at home, you would come up with your own unique password and your own unique username. Like in my case, I use like S. Brady and, and a specialized character. IACRA won't allow you to make a boo-boo with respect to your passwords and usernames. If you put one in wrong, a red series of uh, uh, um, instructions will come up allowing you to and telling you what the problem is. You may not have a, the correct character or specific item uh, in that particular username and password. In this particular case, I preloaded it. And we're going to log in as W. Savage. Notice we have a problem. So let's see what's going on here. All right, my problem was in the password, my second character was an at sign. 
and I did not hit the shift key and therefore it did not register the at and that's a very common problem notice how IACRA did not let me in it'll do that also for your name username also so we're gonna and remember I spoke earlier about if you wanted to edit your registration let's say that when you pre when you pre-registered years ago a couple years ago you were an applicant and a designated examiner well now you're no longer an examiner you might have got hired by the FISDO you could go in there and unclick with your edit registration you could unclick your designated examiner and click aviation safety inspector alright so we're going to retrieve this application and we're going to go up here let's just let's just start a new one we'll take it all away from start to finish with Mr. Savage and we're going to and it's very simple it uses drop down boxes and we're going to notice you could do airworthiness pilot crew members, pilots and instructors. Let's do him as a pilot and we'll start our application. And there he is, Bill Savage. Now as we move down the screen you'll notice Mr. Savage was voluntarily putting his social security number in there. We recommend that you do not use it and you would simply click that button right there. notice it changed the box to do not use a lot of people are worried anymore about laptops being stolen and, and of course prudence has dictated that laptops can get stolen cars get broken into and personal information gets heisted so we recommend that if you're going to be on the internet do not use it although it's not a priority and you can use it you go down to the bottom of the screen there's two areas I want you to look at in particular one is the nav up at the top you'll see steps one through six and down at the bottom a blue hyperlink here to enter your address information you'll notice it pulled this information right out of the FA vitals for Mr. Savage however people working like in Alaska or, or areas way out rural areas out west they might not have a post office or, or excuse me they may have a post office box in the local town when a post office box is entered up in the uh, line two you would not have anything in line one but line two would be filled out you would then have to place a physical address in there and I did an applicant from Alaska and he actually lived in the second bend of the Big Bear River at the Big Oak mailbox that was his physical address and everybody knew it that's where the seaplane landed and dropped the mail off and everybody picked their mail up at the general store at the Big Bend River so having said that we'll move forward once you have put your information in there you click OK at the bottom we look at it and then we want to go up top and click step two if we've done everything correctly in step one you'll notice step one gets a green check mark now we said earlier we're going to give Mr. Savage a private pilot certificate so we drop use our drop down box and we go with our private pilot certificate and notice the red asterisk over here to the right that says required field it's saying selected select restricted or standard a lot of people don't know what a restricted license is but it might be a gentleman or, or lady from the United Kingdom coming here or from another ICAO approved country and they would get a certificate what we call the US based on a foreign and that's where you would click on that box under FAR 6175 or if they decided on a US restricted certificate to pass the US requirements of the FARs we could issue that one so IACRA supports all three of these functions a standard uh, restricted foreign based and then a restricted US test passed we're gonna in this case with Mr. Savage we're gonna give him a standard certificate and if you look to the left item three select the certificate basis in this particular case you'll see FAR part 61 which would be a, a designated examiner or a FAA inspector conducting that practical test using those practical test standards also under FAR 141 IE your 141 schools who employ check instructors and airman certification uh, rating review examiners ACRs we call them um, you would use this box so IACRA now supports all three part 61 141 and 142 in our particular case this guy has come to the FISDO uh, and, and exhibited a hardship he cannot afford a pilot examiner and the FISDO manager has agreed to conduct 
or, or to assign this particular practical test. Remember, mechanics can do this also. Earlier in the paths that we described in the internet uh, front page, they can use this also. And I am going to teach this to our office, um, to the uh, mechanic side of our house uh, eventually. All right, the type of issuance. If Mr. Savage had already possessed a private pilot certificate and he w or she, you know, depending on your applicant, if they wanted to add a multi-engine land or, or something like that, we could do category, ca added category and class. You know, added category, airplane, class, multi-engine land. So in this particular case, we're going to give Mr. Savage an original issuance. And then we're going to go down here and click enter the completion of the required test information. It's a blue hyperlink and it's kind of following down the line. And we're going to click right here and we're going to let Mr. Savage do this in a Cessna 172. So what I suggest is type in the first two letters of CE and hit search. And you will get a whole laundry list of the Cessna products. And you can simply click over here and we'll just put him in a 172. Notice right below in the record count, you'll see there was 296 C Cessna products, and it highlighted very, it, it turned it from dark to light gray, a shaded gray, Cessna 172, and we'll simply go down here and hit OK. All right, and out to the right side, you'll see CE 172-172, and that's what will show up on, on his 8710 electronic application. And let's just put, uh, let's just put uh, 75 hours in this particular aircraft. It says here, click to select the second aircraft. Typically, how this occurs is if the applicant is going for a flight instructor certificate and he or she has done some of their work in a Cessna 172 or 152 fixed, uh, fixed landing gear, and they also have to demonstrate complex aircraft procedures, they would have to demonstrate that in an aircraft such as a 172 RG, the Aero RG, the Beechcraft retractable product. And we would, if we were going to do this test using two aircraft, which is in three aircrafts even certainly acceptable, we would click this line. In this particular case, Mr. Savage is going for his private, and we only need one aircraft for this test. So we just simply go to enter and click OK. All right, notice it put to the right, click here to, for the completion of the required test information. Am I going too fast for everybody, or we're all, we're, everybody's on track? All right, very good. Category and class. Again, the Cessna 172 is an airplane single engine land, so we simply click that one time. Let's just say that we click glider. We made a boo-boo, and it went in there. So once we click glider, nothing happens, does it? Later in the program, I'll show you how to fix that. So we just simply go back and click single engine land, and it's what goes in the selected item box that matters. So we'll hit OK. And you'll notice it went over there to airplane single engine land. Just as easy as that. Be careful if you make a boo-boo going back on the back button. In a lot of cases, if you click that back button, IACRA will default back to nowhere. It'll lock up. And so that's a problem. Uh, the programmers are aware of it. I, I caution you, if you need to navigate in IACRA, use your steps up top and or the cancel button if it's if it's so designated. Excuse me. There's no type ratings, but if the person was a, let's just say that they were very wealthy and their dad bought them a DC-3 and they got their private in a DC-3. Stranger things have occurred and here's a cancel button as I was indicating earlier. If you made a, if you made a mistake and you wanted to to move backward, you could do it with a cancel button. Notice you don't have your steps up top. If your steps are omitted, you can cancel down here. So Mr. Savage is going to get his rating in a 172, so we'll click OK right there. And we're going to go, following our instructions, we're going to go to step three. Click step three and just like that. Now, a lot of people would say, no, he's never held an FAA certificate because he's, that's what he's here for today. But in essence, Mr. Savage has. And he, what would he have had to have had to get this rating? He would have had to have a student certificate, wouldn't he? So we go down here and we click a U.S. standard. A student is not a restricted certificate and it's certainly not a foreign pilot license, but it is a, a U.S. standard pilot certificate. We'll click on that and we can put the number in there. Let's just give him one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, FF. And we'll, we'll go back and we'll put FF in front. Student certificates 
are typically, they'll have EEs or FFs, and you'll see I have a digit too many, and we can put one more F. So now he's FF2345678. And we'll issue this certificate to him for the purposes of this demonstration. We'll issue it to him. Well, let's just give it to him. How about that? April 27th last year. Now, what if it was April 27th of 05? Would it still be valid? 05, 07, that's two years. We're still good. But if it was issued to him April 20th of 05, the student license now, if the person was under the age of 40 years old, the student license would be expired. The medical might still be valid. I don't know what that is, but we'll get rid of that with one little click. All right, and we're going to, as soon as we click Enter Student Pilot, it puts it in there, and all these others are non applicable. All right, so we look at our summary. He was issued, Mr. Savage has previously held an, a student pilot certificate. Its date of issuance, it's still valid. And we're going to follow the instructions and click step four. Now, bear in mind, when they come to the uh, recommending instructor, all this is already pre done. And the recommending instructor, all he would need to do is go in and retrieve this application. I'm simply walking everybody through the entire program so they can see how it works. This person was issued a medical, and we're going to go back and make it of April 20th of, of 06. We'll put it on the, we'll just put it there. And let's give them a second class. And a lot of times students will carry these medicals with them so long, and when they get in the high sweat environment, their flight training environment, the medical will look all tattered. Mom might have even washed it a couple times, and you can barely read the, you can read the date, but you cannot read the endorsement. So if that's the case, you would simply type in the word endorsed and spell endorsed correctly. And that would be suffice. Okay, have you been convicted? No. Can, do you read and yes? And have you ever failed? If they had failed previously on a previous check ride and using the old 8710, they would put yes there. Notice it gives us instructions. Go up to step five. The rules are different for the cross country requirements and night requirements in Alaska. So in this particular case, Mr. Savage is right here. Our, he, our phantom is right here out of Lakeland. So we put no there. And no there. However, we're going to need some time. So we, we said earlier that Mr. Savage had 75 hours. Let's give him 20 hours of dual. Let's give him 55 of solo. This guy liked to fly. So 55 was PIC. We'll give him 10 of cross country. Let's give him 15 of solo. We'll give him 15 PIC solo. The minimum for instrument would have been three. Let's give him five. This guy really wanted to do well. He needed three hours for night. He got that. And he needed 10 takeoffs and landings, but he did five. All right, we scroll down, click step six. If we omitted one of those columns and we hit the step six, it would have given us a reason. Now, we have a problem with step four. wonder what it is. Let's go back and look. Ah, uh, we forgot to t click yes on the... So, again, an application will not be coming back. And if anybody ever was a pilot examiner and they would come home and find this dreaded brown envelope with a return file or have a DPE call a flight instructor because flight instructors are responsible for the 8710, IACRA just caught that problem for us, didn't it? So when we click step six, look what happened to the step in step four. It took the question mark and fixed it. Now, we get a chance to review their summary. We're going to review their, this private pilot, the certificate number. Remember, we said do not use for Social Security, so it's going to issue a pending number. And that would be typed up in the top right portion of the 8060-4 with the temporary airman certificate. All right, so that looks good. And now we're going to wait on IACRA as it does its downloading. We're going to get to physically look at the application if it works correctly. As it's thinking, any questions so far? 
What IACR is doing right now is hopefully downloading an Adobe unofficial copy of the 8710, and there it is as we speak. It allows you to take it line item by line item and look at it. You can just kind of push it up towards the top. You can see where we've got airplane, single engine, land, private, William Savage. Kind of neat thing right there. Mr. Savage did not have a middle name, and if, if they have no middle name out to the side, you have to put NMN for no middle name. As with a lot of foreign applicants, they might have a middle name. It's just simply an initial. If that was the case, it would be like William, it would be Savage, William J. And out to the side, you would put I-O for initial only. Other than that, it's pretty standard. If, again, this is an unofficial copy, and I highly recommend in this paperless world, we still print a copy of that. Reason being, cases cited at our office is a guy or gal will come in, and they've lost their logbook. And this gives them a pretty recent record of of pilot times that which, which they can reconstruct simply for that reason only. Okay, we've looked at it, looks good. And we that gives us our first look. We'll keep that in our memory banks. All right, we're going to go ahead and submit the application. And it says, thank you for submitting your application. Your ID is 7606. And that number is very important in case of a application getting somewhere out there in electronic limbo and we can't find it. All right, we're going to return to login. Now remember, this took about 15 minutes to do that. And it tells you in the Privacy Act that it takes about 15 minutes to do that. And therefore, this would already have been done. And now the, the young man comes to his instructor and says, sir, I've got it filled out, or ma'am, I've got it filled out like you requested. So the recommending instructor needs to log in. Again, they have a unique federal tracking number. In this particular case, I've already loaded it, and we'll find it here. Let's see here. And it did not preload, so we'll, we'll put it in. And again, I'm using these phantoms that we preordained out of Oklahoma City so that we wouldn't have any security issues. So the lengthy process we just took a moment ago to register this guy would have already been done. And this time here, we want to retrieve the application. We want to retrieve Mr. Savage's. And since his is preloaded, and it didn't keep his either, so I don't know why that happen, but we'll put in a new one. And there he shows up. And the, remember the 7606 we talked about? That's the number, the, sub, the application submission number. So we simply select that. You'll notice it changes it to a different color, and we simply continue. Now this is the, this is kind of a problem right here. If the applicant has printed out a copy of his or her unofficial copy of the 8710 and the recommending instructor sees a glaring error with that, he or she could automatically click up top here to reset that application. When you do that, you dump this application out of the electronic queue, if you will. And, and in my opinion, that button should be at the bottom, but the FAA, uh, the programmers, put this at the top. So please don't click that at, at the very top or all the work that's been done is now gone. So Remember, this is the recommending instructor's first view of it, unless the applicant has given the uh, recommending instructor a, a look at the unofficial copy. Everybody with me so far? All right, we've looked at it. It looks good. So there's our, sec there's our first look, and it's the applicant's second look, okay? Again, the whole premise is here is we're trying to get authentic and accurate results. This is kind of neat. The recommended instructor, since this is wireless, all he needs to see is the applicant's test results. And each test will have a set of digits, uh, numbers on them. And we'll, we'll look at this one. Again, this was a we preset it up and it says successful validation. So we can click right there and we can look at Mr. Savage's knowledge test. And I don't know what it 
it did there. Hmm. And that's a glitch, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Let's try it again. All right. Must not be getting the test numbers right. Let me look at it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, zero, 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 one, eight, one, one. Let's search. And let's look at it again. Yes, sir, and so does this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, one, eight, one, one. All right, it's not allowing us to look at it, and that's a problem, and I don't know why that is. Uh, it did it earlier this morning. I did it on the computer, and we're putting in the exact number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, one, eight, one, one. And it gave us a successful validation. So we'll close this, and you'll notice it put a click there. Let's just assume that it said it was okay, and it would have. He, the guy had made a 90. So now we're looking at the airplane single engine land. The important part is, if it had not shown that it was a successful test, it would have not had a check mark there, and we would have not been able to proceed forward. So now what we want to do, we're the recommending instructor, and we're going to get our second look at it. Okay? Now the applicants had two looks at it, now the applicants had three looks at it, and we're on our second look at it. So there's five looks at this 8710. And we'll click off, and we're going to sign the application. And hopefully IACRA will cooperate. Out here at Busy Sun and Fun, a lot of different people are using laptops. There's all kinds of transmissions going through the air, and sometimes it's, it, it interferes with a signal such as this. One of the problems we see with IACRA is People will go up here and read this instruction, and they will click here to sign. If you click there, nothing is going to occur. You have to go down here where a recommending instructor would normally sign, and, you, and you'll notice the little hand, and watch it turn into a pointing finger. And since it's underlined, that indicates one click only. And we clicked, and we'll see, and let it think, and it says a signature is successful. A lot of times in the electronic world, if we get impatient, we can force a, a error the, to become a major snafu. All right, so we're going to, and if we had numerous applicants to, to sign to get ready for a check ride, like if we were at a busy flight school, we could sign another. But we're going to return to the login. And now, so that about 10 minutes to do that, 15 for the, for the young man to Mr. Savage to originally apply. He is now at the place of the check ride, the flight school with the examiner and or the inspector. In this case, remember we said Mr. Savage has come to the FAA under hardship and he can't afford an examiner and he desperately needs to get this check ride. So we're going to log in as the inspector. Again, I have a phantom inspector and we'll log him in. And we'll put our password in. Again, this would be your unique password. And so the previous approximately 30, 35 minutes that was done by the applicant and the recommended instructor, it's now brand new to the examiner. So he or she comes in and logs in. And they're going to do what's called a work and sign. And they're going to look up Mr. Nelson, Mr. Savage, excuse me, by his or her federal tracking number. And it kept it this time. And there is a God. All right. The one that we, there's the original one I did this morning that I preloaded. But the one that we're working on is 7606. Remember I said that number would come in handy? 
We'll select that. It turns it blue, and we want to hit continue. Everybody with me so far? Thank you. All right. This is a unique key that they've done. Now, this allows the, in, the inspector and or examiner to track when this application started. You'll notice this one was started this morning at 942. And it was submitted by the applicant at 957. And the recommending instructor signed it at 1004. The, the, the premises here is that instructors can endorse 60 days in advance. OK? And we wouldn't want that to be expired or they would need more training and another sign-off or recommendation, as they're called. So we close that, and we'll, get, we'll verify the airman identification. We're going to give Mr. Savage a driver's license, and we'll call it S1234567. That looks good. And here recently I've been seeing driver's licenses go all the way out to the year 2029 already. It's amazing. We'll just give him an expiration of 2009. April 7th of 09, and let's just put this in the wonderful state of Florida. So we find Florida. We make sure all our boxes are filled, and we click OK. All right. Now, hopefully, we'll get to see the knowledge test report. There it is. Remember I told you he made a 90? And there's his application, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8,000. And... That allowed the examiner or the inspector to see that knowledge test. In the past, we would attach that knowledge test via a staple to the paper 8710 and mail it in with a certification file. Not needed in this case as we're going paperless. Now we're going to look at the 8710. We need to make sure that it's signed. This is the first look that the inspector and or examiners had to look at it. Again, it's an unofficial copy. And me as the examiner or inspector, I would certainly print that out if I was printer, if I had printer capabilities at that point. Notice you'll see that Herbert Nelson has e-signed it, electronically signed, but you don't see any signature by the applicant. In the, in the previous uh, days, the applicant would have already signed this, but to make sure the, the verification of this person with their ID in front of the uh, inspector and or examiner, this is one of our checks for the uh, security measures we talked about earlier. Review the Privacy Act. The big thing we want to look at in the Privacy Act is it tells you that it takes about 15 minutes and it's paper free and it talks about the ramifications of being paperless and, and how we do our electronic signatures. Now, this is where Mr. Savage has to log in in front of the inspector and or examiner. So the, the applicant logs back in and remember he was C-11694 in W Savage 001 with his unique password. And he's going to retrieve his application. And remember our number, 7606. And notice how it changed from review application to sign application. Very important that it does that. Now, this is the applicant's sixth look at this form. And so having six looks at it, we would hope that the, the accuracy is at an all-time high and that we would not have a return file. Return files are very costly. They're time-consuming, and they consume a lot of man hours. All right, so we go down and look. And it says William Savage, but he's not electronically signed it yet. But it looks good. The recommending instructor signed it. All the hours match. The examiner or inspector gets to look through the applicant's logbook. If it was a mechanic, they would get to look at their logbook, their endorsements, and their mechanics uh, records. And then they verify that this person is who they say they are, and they meet the eligibility requirements. And we're going to sign this application. We simply click that, and we wait patiently for IACR to do its thing. You look up at the top of the screen up here. It will say, click here to sign. And it's an error to sign right there. So we go right down here. Our little hand very slowly comes up. Underlining it means it's one click only. One click. And now that applicant has respectively, by using his or her ID, in this case Bill Savage, he has signed in front of the examiner. And it says return to login. 
This is the point where the inspector and or examiner would go out and conduct the actual, actual practical test. So remember, although we had a lengthy process for Mr. Savage to, to get registered and then from the recommending instructor to sign in, those times would have not been uh, seen by the inspector. So a lot of inspectors say, man, this is a lot of signing out, a lot of signing in. Examiners say it's, a, it's, a, it's cumbersome, but it's really not once you get in the flow of it. And again, the saving grace of this is the accuracy in the, in the return file that you will not get. So we're going to log back in as our inspector. In this case, remember Mr. Uh, Savage had a hardship and he could not afford an a examiner. And fortunately, the FISDO uh, made provisions for him to do that. And we'll, we'll log back in as the inspector. And you'll notice his name is Nelson, too. No relation, by the way. And if they were a relation, that inspector could not do this check right. And we're going to retrieve this application, and we're going to do the work and sign. Now, who are we working and signing? This is after, supposedly, after we've come back from the practical test, either with a successful or an unsuccessful or a discontinuance. And a discontinuous would be used for uh, the, the portion of the check ride that was, could not be completed due to f unforeseen factors, weather, mechanical, illness, that type of stuff, conflict of schedule, but not for unsuccessful tests. That's, that's a big common misconception. So we're going to log back in. We've got to find Mr. Savage. There he is right there. And we're going to find his application. Remember, we're looking with seven, we're working with that number 7606. It turns it blue. We're going to continue. Practical test results. Remember I spoke a moment ago about the outcome of the test? You'll see it down here. Click to approve. Click here to disapprove. Click for discontinuance. So we gave Mr. Savage the test today. And let's just put LAL and see what we get. That looks like us. And notice it turned it the darker shade of green and put it in the, in the light gray box there. That looks good. And his oral was 2.5 hours. And the duration of the flight was 1.6 hours. And we put him in November 54729er. And it's a 172. Mr. Savage did not have two aircraft for his check ride. And there was no simulators and there was no uh, training devices required, as they are allowed now in the 142 environment. All right, we're going to assume that Mr. Savage passed his practical test, and so we hit OK. And now we're going to go down here and enter the limitations. And there's not any for this particular practical test. Let's say that earlier when we said yes he had been in Alaska, the Alaska would already show up in there. And if we put in this limitation here, and you'll notice it shows up in that box, and we said, oh, that's not what we really wanted, we could simply click on it and it will disappear. So in this particular case, he is getting an unrestricted U.S. private pilot, Part 61 test, with no limitations. Commercial certificates, we might limit them to, 50, you know, if they didn't have an instrument rating, we might limit them to, to no passengers at night and limited to 50 nautical miles. All right. Let me cancel that. Click here to enter aircraft authorizations. And this is for vintage aircraft, something that we do now when we issue a letter of authorization. The letter of authorization now is their license for, like, military-type aircraft. So in this particular case, there are none. And we're going to hit OK. There's no VFR aircraft. And now we're going to review the applicant's certificate of summary. Mr. Savage is going to receive, in a moment, a private pilot. Remember, we did not use his uh, social security number, so he is going to receive a pending number. And the pending number, when the issuance of the hard copy, the credit card size copy that comes out now, it will have a newly assigned number on it. But right now, the temporary that we're going to print out 
And a question arises, if we don't have access to a printer, what do we do? This would still electronically submit it, and we could hand issue the 8060-4A temporary. Okay, again, using the, the verbiage pending up in the certificate number. So this looks good. He's going to get a private pilot pending number, airplane, single engine land, no limitations. Now, the only thing that's not been completed is for the inspector or examiner to sign this application. So we click sign again, common error, they'll go up top and want to click there. Notice that it's already pre-filled some areas. It says the certificate of rating is based on other approved FAA criteria. It's going to put the private pilot airplane signage on land. It's going to put its assessment 172. It's going to put the end number. And it's going to put the time, the ground, and the oral portions of the test. And it's automatically clicking the box, knowledge test report, and temporary airman certificate. Those would be attached via a staple to the 8710. OK, so what are we lacking to do? We're going to go up here and we're going to click here to sign. One click only. And we could either review the 8710 one more time, we could return to the login, or we can review and print the temporary airman certificate, which is what I do. Once I've looked at it, and there's the certificate itself that you simply click, and it will print out on any, on any type printer that's a, that, that is printer friendly and hooked to that computer. Or, as I said previously, if you don't have a printer capability, issue the handwritten because this is what's automatically being generated up to Oklahoma City to Airman Records up at AFS 760. Now, if we found a problem with it now, after it's already been looked at, what we could do is, remember I said make a copy, the unofficial copy? We would highlight that in orange and write around it, IACRA correction, and send the corrected file in. And there would be an examiner out there in Oklahoma City that would fix that. And you'll notice up top, thank you for submitting your application. It has been sent to Airman Registry. 7606 is the number. And if they ever have a problem, they can refer to the IACRA Help Desk in Oklahoma, who will route them to Airman Records using that number, 7606, and they can track that application down. You would simply sign the temporary right here where it says E signed by Inspector Ray Nelson. No relation we spoke. And you, could, you would e-sign that and, and give that to that applicant, and your day is done with that particular applicant. A 100% accurate transaction file has occurred without any worry of that file coming back to the FAA, to the examiner's office in Orlando, with a correction notice, those dreaded brown envelopes that, that inspectors and examiners are, are familiar with, unfortunately. This not only does this for pilots, it does it for mechanics, and it does it for renewals, and it's totally paperless. And once you get through the initial, it took me about 15 minutes to do my examiner one, or inspector one, and the reason the other one seemed long and cumbersome was that I, I walk you through a complete registration by the applicant, a login look at from the recommending instructor, a signing by the recommending instructor, and then the login and signage of the applicant in front of the inspector and or examiner. So I simplified the process. I had to con you know, do it in a 45-50 in a minute program. So with that we're going to conclude and I, I adamantly ask people to call the FISDO. My number, you could simply call the FISDO and ask for Steve Brady. Or you could hit one when you get the FISDO login on the phone, and then my extension is 7770, and I will answer any questions that I know the answer to. If I don't know the answer, I will certainly uh, try to find the answer. And I'll open the floor up at this time to any questions that you may have on IACRA. It's, it is the future. Uh, it's right now. It's the present. A lot of people, to some other people, it's the future. And unfortunately for me, I've been using it for four years now. It's the past. But we want to encourage you to get familiar with it and move into the new electronic age with us. Any questions? Okay. If no, yes, Beeler. Uh, Steve, if the uh, applicant was an 
A and E. Uh, does IACRA have any provision to, for the examiner to make certain that alien has TSA clearance uh, for the, uh, the, light, the uh, certificate he's applying for? That, that's a very good question. First of all, if he's an alien, we want to find out what planet he came from. Yeah. Okay, no, just kidding. Beeler brings up a very, very good point. And the, the point is there are some TSA security requirements now for, for foreign applicants that are, that are alien. Number one, we need to determine they meet the ICAO standards. And, and if the examiner or inspector doesn't know, there's, there's a guidance in our handbook on finding out the ICAO equivalent if it's an ICAO approved country. If you, don't, if you don't like the paperwork you see, pick up the phone and call TSA and make sure that they meet the requirements. And, and generally at the GA level, where they're flying aircraft less than 12.5, you can do that. You, you can call them and they will help you as quickly as practical. Um, did I answer your question? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes, Kathleen. Steve, I'm a, I'm a poor flight instructor. Can I, I can't afford a computer. What do I do? You know, that's a very good question. A lot of people can't afford a flight computer and, or a, a laptop or a personal computer, but most fixed base operators now have them sitting in the lobby and they are typically wireless or hooked up to a LAN internet system. And just simply ask them, say, you don't mind if I use your computer and, and may, might I possibly uh, use your printer? But it's certainly Computers are more and more prevalent today than they were five years ago, and they'll be more and more prevalent as time goes on. But that's what I would do. I would, I would ask the fixed base operator. And, in, and, in, and the bottom line is, is don't ever deny somebody the opportunity to learn to fly because you don't have a laptop. Um, if you don't have one, we will still accept the old paper 8710. However, we're trying to get people geared towards the new electronic age. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Use a small printer, uh, less than eight inches wide, a portable printer. His question was, can you use a small, uh, less than eight inches wide printer? I don't know the answer to that. I know that these, the original uh, 8060-4s, uh, the temporary airman certificate in the old days, weren't on eight and a half by 11 like this one comes out. So I don't know the answer to that. I would certainly like to try one. Um, one of the things I do want to mention is in the new IACRA, we, this pre-prints a watercolor mark right there like you see. ACRA used to have to have special ACRA paper with a, with a pre-printed watercolor. This one will automatically put it on any piece of normal white 8.5 by 11. Did I answer your question? All right, thank you very much. Anybody else? Yes. Um, for instance, uh, if there's a foreign pilot and they have a permanent address in their country, and then here, is there any uh, provision for that? Yes. Back on our address page, we, they can put their address of their, uh, like, 25 Nottingham Village in London. They could use that. But then it would say mailing address, where you want the certificate mailed to. They could use a U.S. or another address. It, it addresses that problem, that issue. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Does this system take care of uh, CFIGs for gliders and yes. Uh, also yes, it all does. the light sport aircraft yes, it categories? Does. Earlier in the program, when I was showing the paths, it, it does do gliders, it does flight instructor drills, it does ground instructors also. If you ever have a problem, remember on that very first page, um, you can report above. I need to wrap this tape up, but I will be available in the audience and I'll answer any other questions we have. I thank you so much for your participation today. This is a very a big thing for the FAA, we, and, and it's up to you guys and gals to get the word out for us. Thank you very much.